to that issue. Let's get on to climate change now and revelations uh, that climate change will be formally introduced now into Year 12 syllabus, into HSC syllabuses, at least in New South Wales, perhaps around the country. Let's cross to Melbourne now where we're joined by Bella Debrero, who heads up the Western Civilisation section of the Institute of Public Affairs. Thanks for joining us, uh, Bella. Uh, do, do you think this is uh, a good idea? Presumably it's a good thing. It's such a dynamic area of scientific study. It's such a major political issue and economic issue uh, around the world. Uh, our Year 12 students ought to be studying it. Well, look, I think it's... Well, first of all, it's not particularly shocking that, you know, climate change is going to be compulsory in Year 11 and 12, because it's all they hear at school anyway. I mean, it's just... You know, it's in the curriculum from the day from day one to the very last day of school. They That's get it in preschool. They hear about it in preschool. They get it in preschool. First-hand experience. But I am actually well. I'm optimistic and pessimistic about this. I'm optimistic because it's going to be the first time in their lives that they actually hear an alternative viewpoint. They're going to hear, hopefully, that um, climate change is not necessarily man-made, and that there might be other reasons why the climate's changing. Um, I'm I'm pessimistic because I don't know if the teachers will actually go through and teach. The alternative viewpoint because you know we know pretty much the the general consensus by the teaching profession which is climate change is man-made they this is the this is their their viewpoint and this is the viewpoint that they they indoctrinate the children with from you know the very first day to the very last day so i'm pessimistic about whether they're actually going to teach what is required of them on the curriculum yeah, but if the teachers are a bit ignorant of this, it's understandable because the public debate uh, on climate change is so ignorant. So maybe if there is a formal uh, syllabus uh, put into uh, their agenda, uh, the teachers will actually will open their eyes. As you say, the fact that the climate is always changing, the fact that even the IPCC defers to the natural variations in the climate that they don't quite understand as yet uh, being a large part of the factor. Uh, and, of course, the point that... Uh, uh, any uh, anthropogenic uh, changes, any human-induced changes, uh, can only be on top of or mixed up with all those other natural fluctuations. Yes, you know, I wonder, are they going to be told uh, that Australia only produces 1.3% of uh, global emissions? Um, are they going to be told that? Uh, you know, are they going to be told that perhaps, you know, climate change has something to do with sun activity? Uh, it's, it would be very interesting to see what they actually come up with on the curriculum. And, and, and as you say, it's a positive thing because teachers might learn something and they might be able to pass that on to their students. How could they teach this issue and international efforts to try and deal with it without actually pointing out that Australia's emissions are 1.3% of global emissions and reducing? And at the same time that they point out that China's emissions are growing by more than that amount every year. Well, there's always, there's always a certain element of um, picking, picking and choosing the facts that you want to teach your students. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what worries me, is whether all those pertinent facts will be included. I suppose the other one is, I wonder whether they'll be taught about the temperature homogenisation, the, the, the homogenisation of the Australian temperature record and how that is the driving force of the, the changing records we're seing around here, although that's the underlying uh, precondition for the temperature records we often hear about. Well, it'll be very interesting, and I look forward to, to sort of reading with more detail about what they're going to be teaching. So are you concerned that there is going to be then, through having this formalised in, in, in the uh, curriculum, though, a, a, a real bias in what students might be expected uh, to produce? Uh, for instance, you might have a sceptical or a dissenting voice in a classroom who can map out some sort of argument uh, that goes against the grain of what the, the curriculum points out or the teacher might uh, want to see, and, and that could actually damage their marks. Well, yes, I mean, that's, that's a real possibility. It's a real danger that uh, students might not be brave enough to, to actually express a dissident view, um, even though they've been presented with all the facts. Um, I suppose we just have to hope that, that by the time it's introduced into the curriculum, teachers will want to, and, and want to encourage both sides of the debate in the classroom. But um, I think it's going to depend on the teacher as well, isn't it? It's going to depend on just how much... They, 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 they want to indoctrinate the children at, at, in their classroom. Now, if this is happening in one state, given we have this national uh, curriculum focus, uh, presumably we're, we're going to see it uh, introduced nationally? Um, we could, but it really depends on, on the state governments um, whether they choose to, to introduce it into their own curriculum or not. So I can't, I can't say. It's, it's unlikely that, that, uh, that Andrew's government will be introducing this kind of diversity viewpoint in the curriculum in, in the near future. 
No, it's hard to imagine some of these governments mm. actually getting all the information that should be uh, presented to, to students uh, into the debate. I suppose it's very hard to have confidence uh, in an education system that allows kids to have a day off for climate change protests to then actually manage a sensible syllable when it, uh, a syllabus when it comes to, um, to climate change. Yeah, look, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see what, what happens in the other states, but I, I'm not holding my breath for Victoria, that's for sure. All right, thanks so much for joining us, uh, Bella. I appreciate it. Thank you.